All right, welcome back, and we are going to be covering, finally, a series I haven't touched on here yet, some Roroni Kenshin. This is a series that I had read many, multiple times. Dang, I caught myself still forgetting things, because, I mean, it's been a long time, of course. It's been years, but love the series. Love it. Now, on this one in particular, I'm going to keep it kind of short, and we're going to go over some speed feats. And just a single strength feat. It's not the strongest strength feat. It was actually just something I caught while, uh, <laughs> while I was actually looking for speed feats. But it, it just highlights something really funny. Because they're strong <laughs> for, you know, for what the series is supposed to be. It's like, it's supposed to be based on realism. But, oh man, these people get some crazy superhuman feats. Alright, so let's get into it, yeah? Alright, so, we're going to show a little bit of combat speed. And... None of these, except for like, towards the end, rather, let's just be honest here, none of these speed come from like, Kenshin at the strongest. I want to give myself some more things that I can scale to, uh, really look into to, you know, get the full strength of people. So, if I can show a strong case, or have a strong case, or a really strong showing for feet that doesn't require me to go to the absolute strongest versions of the people. That's what I want to do. So a lot of like, everything here is not everybody at their strongest. This isn't Kenshin after he's already retrained himself or anything like that. All right, cool. We're going to start off with this guy here, Itekura, and his fight with Saito. Now, the crazy thing about this fight is we can see there's an exchange where Itekura is telling him like, yo, if, you're, if your sword isn't faster than a rifle bullet, then you're not, you're, you're not going to be able to reach me. And Saito's like, not a problem. Good, I've taken out many of those bullets. You know, I, I can slice through many of them. I am faster, okay? Now, these are just statements. But I wouldn't be using them if they weren't backed up. Look at this man actually, like, catch a bullet directly. And you can see, I want you to take the time, his hand is already there. His hand, his arm, hand has already fully extended to where it's going to be. He's already fully reacted to where the trajectory of the bullet is. And long since had his arm and hand in the way. In fact, you can see, he catches the bullet after it's less than, it's just like fractions of meters away at this point. Okay, like he fully grasped it. It's not like his hand was already in a catching position, it was wide open. This is some insane reaction and movement speed. This would be for combat speed though, not raw movement. I'm gonna cover this as a combat speed thing, and then I'm gonna get into some movement speed. But it's it's actually much more impressive than that. <laughs> so what's used here is essentially called a Snyder infield, which has a muzzle velocity of 381 meters per second, or just barely over Mach 1. It's about 1.11 is the Mach. Now, the thing is, as I said, Saito, he's at minimum matching their speed, if not just outright outspeeding the bullets, which I actually show he does, um, or get to that point. But he can straight up catch these bullets. Whereas with Saito, here you'll see, he's not able to just have his hand there leisurely and then just like close it and capture the bullet like no problem. He has to actually reach out in the moment catch his sword and doing so actually drags up the earth beneath him okay he's quite obviously actually not just putting out much more force than the bullets but also with more speed now again the muzzle velocity of the rifle is little over Mach 1 but the distance We've covered how much force perspective can play a role when the difference in depth is portrayed in a single picture. But as we can see in his bullet catching feet, look, these riflemen are no more than 10 meters away, like given the general height of a Japanese man. Because, again, we've seen with the force perspective, just like you have people that are like a third in volume compared to like the guy who's just barely that far away from them at all, right? Well, compared here, those people that are like you would say, man, those people might be pretty far away from Itekura. But they're actually not. Like, you can see that their size is relatively close. That what looks like might even be a cliffside that he's standing on really isn't. There's another one between the men down beneath, okay, down below. And they're, they're all very close, so it's actually very small. It's, the whole picture portrays it. It shows that actually the gaps between them is very, very small. 
such that you could actually lowball the distance to about no more than 10 meters away. Uh, that's I got a different number. This is to lowball it harder. It should be 10 meters at most, okay? And 10 is an easy number to use. But so, if it requires just over Mach 1 timing to catch the bullet if it's within 381 meters in one second, what if only 10 meters have passed by the time of the feat? So, yeah, it's no longer 381 meters in a second, but 10 meters in 0 0.026 seconds. That's a quarter of 1% of a second. Given what we see his hand is already fully placed, waiting for the bullet, and can grasp it within fractions of even a single meter's distance, as I said, Iteka himself is definitely capable of moving his hands just over that same Mach 1 as well. Something, as I've always said, reacting to a projectile and moving out of the way, or moving into its way, is not the same as, like, racing it. Like, it's not like he could beat this bullet in a race, right? Well, well, actually, in this case, yeah, yeah, he can, actually. Actually, his hands can, in fact, if he was a boxer throwing out jabs, he can punch faster than that rifle bullet, is the point. Because we can get the closeness such that he can actually be comparable to the bullet itself, the actual speed, and not simply being able to react to it over a distance. The distance is so negligible, and he's already able to capture it within such fractions of its full distance even being traveled, already being placed, like, waiting for the bullet. He can punch faster, he can catch bullets faster than the bullets can move themselves. That's the important part. Okay, now, all of this is really important because, as I've said, so, yeah, the distance matters just so much because, I mean, it's multiplicatively more or less impressive based on the distance to the person. Like, I may not be able to react to lightning from 100 meters away, but I could surely react if the same speed of lightning is not faster or slower, but it was to be from 100,000 meters away, for instance. So what I wanted to show is that the distance was such that he did, in fact, measure up in hand speed to the rifle bullets themselves. Now compare this to Saito's attack, and as I said, instead of waiting for his blade, as he did for the bullets, he now has to extend his hand within the attack's window, and he does so now at a closer range of 0.6 meters at most, the general length of a katana, right? Putting them both now comfortably above Mach 1 in attack speed and a good deal higher in reactions. That's the first feat. And again, this is not even close to the highest end. Uh, if you want more videos covering that, then comment down below. Tell me what you want. But next, we're going to go into the pretty early, actually, this is, very, this is volume 4, but still a very high end feat for speed. And this, this is raw movement speed, okay? We're gonna cover the Gatling gun. Now, this Gatling gun was manufactured in about 1862, uh, designed in about 1861, and it has a muzzle velocity of 2,000 feet per second, or approximately about 609.6 .6 meters per second, okay? When we look at it, when we go, you know, distance divided by time, and we're trying to get speeds and everything. We can also get time based on distance divided by speed and such. We can get an idea here. Kenshin does indeed come out to about Mach 3.05 to Mach 4.54, with Mach 5 being hypersonic. If for those, So this is getting into supersonic to very close to hypersonic, okay? Very low hypersonic. Now, where am I getting these numbers from? these mocks. I'll be up front. Look, the very first thing I wanted to check was actual, like, versus Battle Wiki, because the reason I'm doing this video, Nagopart was like, hey, I would love if you could do Kenshin. And they're talking about, like, the speed of Kenshin being just, like, Supersonic Plus. And, yeah, there's, there's a lot of reasons not to believe versus Battle Wiki. So that's the first place I checked, because, well, shoot, where did they go wrong? Because I don't trust them either. They do a lot of things wrong. But I'll be honest, this cap isn't wrong. And I'm sorry for... I will never, ever, ever uh, change anything to suit any given person. The numbers don't lie. It really does come out to Mach 3.05 to Mach 4.54. What do they use? So here's the thing is, as I've said, they do use pixel scaling. But 
This is pixel scaling that is acceptable. As I've said, if you don't understand why I accept certain pixel scaling over others, as I said before, just please, a lot of my videos chain together, it is important, but it comes down to that force perspective sort of thing. And you can't really compare the size or de different depths of people that are vastly different. Like a small person to a whole building, or even to a full room or something. But that's not what they did, actually. Uh, not even, like, remotely. And the pixel scaling actually checks out. The math checks out. And so with the time for, like, the bullets and him actually moving, we can see that I'll put some of the numbers here with like the time, the distance, the speed, or even just the math that they used here. Like, it actually checks out. But, let me be very clear here. This isn't just a lowball. And if you actually check their hyperlink to where they get this calc, they even say that this is a very, very comfortable lowball. Which I agree with, and I agree with using. But they leave a little thing out when it comes to scaling. Because this is a calc. This isn't scaling. Scaling uses calcs. Calcs do not use scaling. Necessarily, right? The calc isn't caring about the person getting stronger or faster or using a different technique. This calc was calcing exactly what happened. But what did happen? Well, you have to understand, this last bit was not taken into consideration at all for scaling purposes. And that is, Kenshin was literally carrying Yahiko in, in one arm entirely and not using Godspeed at all, okay? This makes for a very, very easy means of close to, if not slightly above Mach 5 speed just off logic, just off logic alone, right? He's not using Godspeed, but it's even worse. He's not in the Batosai like Slayer mindset, which we know verbatim makes him faster, not just stated by Saito when he fights him, but shown with the actual feats themselves. But he's literally carrying a full child. <laughs> what? Okay, so there's so many things where, and this is also at the beginning, this is volume 4 of like volume 19, I believe? Now, the thing about Kenshin, he's never actually getting stronger and stronger. In fact, for him to get stronger, he instead regresses as a character. He doesn't go through training arcs like the other characters. Except for he finally does. He does actually have a training arc where he actually does train with his master to fully get stronger and, you know, overcome some of his weaknesses to where he actually comes across his strongest technique with the strongest attack speed, which I have not calced because I'm saving that for later. <laughs> but he gets to hypersonic speeds just off of scaling, okay? But this calc is correct. That's what I wanted to say. Uh, yeah, good job first battle wiki, actually. Yeah, that's a very good calc uh, for what is shown. But there is something else. And this is, this happens much later, but it's actually in a flashback. And this is where Kenshin outruns a freaking explosion. <laughs> this is the last speed I want to bring up. He outruns an explosion! Not fully, mind you, but enough to get out of a cave and leap to safety before it ever even touches him. It doesn't even singe him, it never catches him at all. And even the absolute slowest possible explosion nets you around Mach 8 speeds. I can show you the table here. If I go all the way to the bottom, you're looking at like 2,700 meters per second. Which, again, like I just said, comes out to just about Mach 8 speeds. And he outran it. What's more is, this is where he was already impaired and he had no sixth sense. That's something that really does play a role in Kenshin. Um, er, well, a lot of the characters really, but especially Kenshin, where that's exactly how he fought, like Seta, who was faster than him himself, and he actually be able, to, he had to actually use like his sixth sense to be able to keep up with him. His sixth sense is crazy, and yet he did not have it. This was pure reaction speed, so we know that he can actually react way faster than this with his sixth sense and start moving earlier. But that would have actually nerfed the feat. That means he wouldn't have had to be as fast because he would, he would have reacted sooner. No, this was raw, pure, oh shoot, and he outran the explosion. Now, the one thing that makes this questionable, however, is that it impaired his hearing, denoting that the speed of sound was somehow fast enough to catch Kenshin, but not the explosion that was faster than sound by almost eightfold. What? <laughs> now, again, this is kind of an oversight in just logic, but we see this even like with One Piece, with like Luffy running away from, I forgot his name, but the guy who does sound based attacks with his teeth. And like, ah, that it, it's hurting. 
Luffy's way faster than Mach 1, right? He's way faster than the speed of sound. So, it happens. We're not going to say that Luffy is slower than sound now, but it happens. But at the same time, that's also not Luffy's best feat. And this would be Kenshin's best feat, so it's kind of weird. But, it's very easy to argue that even with Godspeed, because this is, again, once more, is him not at his best, already injured and not using Godspeed in the slightest. What is his top speed, then? Well, again, we can go scaling, but that's not necessarily what I'm doing here. I just wanted to show, he has a feat that does suggest potentially being around Mach 8 himself, without Sixth Sense, without using Godspeed. So, yeah, while it's not possible to know his actual full speed, and you can see that, yeah, that the Supersonic Plus makes, like, it actually makes for the lowest end, if you merely scale a very injured Kenshin who isn't in his Slayer mindset, that is carrying a full child in his arm while not using his god speed at all, that is the lowest end, but that's not a realistic low end. That's low end while qualifying for a bunch of other inhibiting factors. Kitchen, at the end of the day, with even the lowest amount of scaling, even at the beginning, like within volume four, trying to use any amount of god speed or even being in his, uh, Batosai, you know, mindset, easily reaches into some low-end hypersonic speeds. When he retrains and gets even faster and really gets more scaling, how fast do you think Kenshin ends up becoming? Bonus feat, I wanted to show this real quick. This man, this is what was funny. I didn't remember him having strength feats on this level this early, but before the Gatlin feat even happens, <laughs> look at this man threaten this other guy, uh, I forgot his name. It's just the guy who uh, has the Gatling gun. He cuts his lamppost through the stone in half with such force and speed that it doesn't just like free fall, it gets chucked. He didn't throw it. He's like, like Kenshin caught it in midair and threw it into the building. His sword slash slashed it so fast with like actual momentum somehow that its entirety flew into the building. Holy crap. I mean, uh, I won't be showing this, but I know it ends up happening, spoiler alert, but Saito ends up with a stab, like annihilating an entire steel door. What? Because when we talk about like the potency down to like the centimeter cube, like he's no longer even using the full like mass of his blade anymore. It's down to like the tip of his blade. He stabs, Saito stabs. Saito's my favorite character, by the way. So if you like him, yay, we're on, we, you know, we're on the same wavelength there. Saito's amazing, but <laughs> the boy stabs. A steel door, so, ah, there's some really amazing feats in there as well. Oh my gosh, there's more! Okay, I'm sorry. I'll get on a rant because I have so much more I want to cover, but, ah, shorter videos so I can do more. Shorter videos so I can do more. Need to remind myself. But hopefully you enjoy some of the speed feats and calcs that go into, uh, the Roni Kenshin. And these are some of the lower ends in terms of scaling, just not calcs. And so if you like the uh, video, if you want me to cover more Kenshin, uh, put it down below. My next video will be covering some Inuyasha before I go into some others. But yeah, hopefully you enjoy the video. And if you did, of course, like, comment, subscribe. All of it helps the channel grow and helps me keep doing what I'm doing. And uh, peace. Stop.